Hey everybody, I'm James. Uh, I'm a third year medical student at the Medical College of Georgia and today I'll be presenting, uh, representing my teammates, oops, uh, representing my teammates on our work to build a comprehensive oncology patient education and student education program. So medical students have a lot of opportunities if they're interested in oncology, but the problem is a lot of these opportunities are somewhat disconnected. A lot of times vary based on individual seeking out shadowing opportunities, research opportunities, fundraising, so we wanted to see if we kind of synergize some of these various activities. In addition, at least at our school, we were finding that our hemonc interest group had fairly low attendance. And for my interest, there is no radonc interest group. Um, in addition, we had a lack of a comprehensive oncology module. The way oncology is taught at our school, as I'm sure many schools, is there'll be oncology day in each module as we go through the year. But a lot of students were asking for a comprehensive review as we get to the end and prepare for clerkship. But on the other hand, students didn't want yet another mandatory week of lectures. So the question is, um, how do we create a systematic and comprehensive oncology program that's engaging to students, yet doesn't require a mandatory burden? So this is the pathway we took, and I'll go into depth with each of these. But broadly speaking, um, we start by transforming the purview of the oncology interest group, building a strong relationship with the Georgia Cancer Center across the street from us, and then going through three phases that the students participated in that I'll explain uh, in a bit. So the first step was we took our hemonc interest group and turned it into a general oncology interest group. So that would include everybody, surgeon, pathology, radiology, and of course, radon. Uh, the next step was to reach out to the then new director of our cancer center, Dr. Cortez, and who was very enthusiastic about getting more a student engagement in the cancer center and building a strong relationship with the medical college. And of course, I also reached out to faculty members and leadership in the other disciplines like urology and guy that we would want to involve. So the nefarious looking gentleman with the bulk cutter here is because one of my classmates told me, so you couldn't find anyone to build a radoc interest group, so you hijacked the hemoc one, which I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> um, so the first activity that we had was uh, Unite in the Fight competition. So Unite in the Fight is kind of our local version of Relay for Life, um, people will form teams and fundraise for the Cancer Center. So the Cancer Center asked me um, if I could get the OIG, the Oncology Interest Group, to participate and have a team. So we were happy to, to do that, of course, but I was thinking, well, you know, we're not just um, capable of contributing with money, we're gonna be future doctors, so why don't we come up with a way that we can contribute in that unique sense? So what we said is, okay, we're gonna have a competition and we're gonna have teams of students they're gonna be a fundraising competition to see who fundraises the most, but as well, each team will be paired with a physician mentor in all the various disciplines. And they'll make short five minute videos on screening and prevention techniques for each of the cancers that they're representing. So in this way, we're contributing to patient care at an early stage in a way appropriate for medical students and um, helping the cancer center out. So we weren't really sure exactly how much involvement we've got, but this was our sign up sheet. Within a few hours, we had 40 students sign up in nine different teams. And you can see the mentors on the right are ENT, surgery, medon, radon, all across the field. So this really caught us off guard, to be totally honest, because we, as I'm sure some of you medical students experience, you ask your class to sign up for stuff and four people sign up and you're begging the group me over and over. That didn't happen here, so we wondered why. And I think there's a few motivations. First, this was a great network opportunity. This was done early in M1, so a lot of people who may not be interested in HEBONC or RADONC, they still wanna be surgeons, they wanna go into ophthalmology, so they wanted a chance to network with these physicians anyways. Secondly, we offered service hours for the fundraising piece of it, which is a requirement, so that checks that box. And lastly, it's a competition, so there is this ERAS component that you could get for a second, third place. Um, so the outcomes, we had, as I mentioned, nine teams, nine physician mentors, 44 students and 32 service hours. Um, and from the uh, fundraising piece of it, it was definitely a success. We raised over $10,000 and their highest single donor was like two or $300. So it wasn't like one mega donor dropped $9,000. Um, and the other thing is five of the top 15 teams across the Unite the Fight event were the MCG teams. Um, and on the video side of it, um, we had a lot of positive feedback from the physicians, from the students and engaging the activity. They successfully produced the videos. We had, of course, the top three. And one of the things I was really passionate about is we didn't just have a panel of judges that were physicians. Of course, we included oncologists. We included one of the survivors from the Georgia Cancer Center who was willing to let her voice because at the end of the day, these are patient-facing videos, so we want the patient's voice represented. And she felt that these videos were appropriate to the literacy level we'd expect in our clinic. 
So um, besides these other outcomes, one of the things that's in progress is we're taking these videos and we're gonna publish them into iPads that are available in the clinic waiting room so that patients can benefit from these patient education videos. Okay, so we did the patient education piece and that's early on in M1 where many students haven't even seen the, have, don't have the fund of knowledge yet to teach a lecture on oncology, but they can do some learnings and do screening and prevention. So now we wanted something for later on at the end of pre-clerkship as they're getting ready for clerkship. So uh, one of my teammates invented this term, Onk Bonk. Bonk stands for, Bonk stands for uh, best oncology competition, but it's just a cute alliteration, Onk Bonk. Um, so basically what we said was, okay, last time was patient facing, this time will be student facing. So we'll do the best type of learning there is, which is teaching. We're gonna teach each other all the material we've learned over the last year and a half of pre-clerkship into a comprehensive TIN lecture series so that if you, you can watch it in real time or watch it afterwards and you'll get everything you need like little mini pathoma built by our own classmates. Um, the second component is we still wanted to pair them with the uh, physician mentors. So the physician piece was that after the student lectures, they would give a little brief talk about their career trajectory, what brought them to want to work with cancer patients um, and do a little Q, <coughs> excuse me, Q and A. So uh, again, we had a very successful sign up. We had 10 teams this time, about 50 students participate, many of the same uh, pairings of students with physician mentors. Um, and so I think here, part of the motivation again was um, some side benefits like number one, step prep. Number two, which was one big thing I really didn't expect was the career exploration of, uh, piece of this. I was really focused on designing around the step prep part of it. But as I sat through each of the 10 lectures, it was just kind of awesome urologists, sorry, my mic keeps kind of coming in now, hear urologists talk about why they wanted to go into cancer, hemonts, radonts, everybody. So that was a really cool piece of it. I think something that motivated students to participate. And again, there is an, there's an ERAS component to it. They get to say they gave a lecture to their class and participated in medical education. So the outcomes, we had great student feedback, great faculty engagement. The students created two question, step style questions for each of the lectures they made. So if you watch it after the fact, you could watch the 10 lectures and then do these uh, two times 10 is 20 questions and then get a sense of how prepared you are. Uh, and lastly, we, uh, the software we use to record our lectures allows us to see views. And there are about 40 students who weren't actually in the competition who viewed these lectures, whether just out of curiosity to make fun of their friends or what, but it's definitely having an impact on people outside of just the participants. Um, so the other piece of this, this phase three is another unintended consequence we didn't need to design. But a lot of the students that went through this experience, they ended up becoming leaders for us mentoring. You know, if they were in the urology group through these two experiences, they wanted to mentor the next group. And some of them, for instance, uh, Rachel became the urology interest group president. So now she's, she may have gone into urology just because she was interested in urology, but now she's had this uh, year and a half long experience being exposed to oncology, whether or not she wants to come over to our side of the fence or not, she can now rub that onto the other students who are interested on uh, urology and then spread the good work. So putting all the pieces together, there's three big phases that we think about. First is the patient education piece, which is, you know, something that's simpler that a new M1 student can do with some learnings. The deliverables there are the patient education videos, the fundraising piece that was successful and probably sustainable given the numbers that we saw, as well as the MD networking. The next piece is the student education piece. As they build that fund of knowledge, they can share more contributions and the deliverables there being the lecture series, as well as deepening those relationships they have with their faculty mentors. And lastly, you know, this, what I think is the best part of it is they become the future uh, oncology student leaders. Um, and this is just a picture from one of our events. And with that, I'd like to thank the team and uh, Dr. Cortez, Dr. Daner for mentoring us. Thank you.